Hi everyone, this is SWRPG Guides, and I'm going to be doing a guide for Obligation today. Um, this is something that um, is a little bit more advanced. Some players might have trouble understanding how it works. Um, I will be going over the general rules for Obligation for part of the video, but the, you know all the information is in the book. I just want to clarify kind of how it works and how I use it when I um, GM sessions. But the main part of this video is going to be going into ideas for GMs to use when they are dealing with obligation for players. And I'll go into that in a little bit. So um, to start off, obligation is um, a tool that is used in Edge of the Empire, that, that rule book. And it is for um, you know the characters in that, uh, that rule set because a lot of them are criminals or you know smugglers, bounty hunters, whatever it might be. You know, they're all rough types, so they're probably dealing with some type of problem or issue that they will have to deal with. So um, if you're kind of looking for you know a way to look at this and understand how obligation works, you can think of it as notoriety in a way. Um, it's not that for, for every single obligation that you might have. There are many different types, but for the most part, it's just like, you know, stressful things that you would have to deal with. And um, there is a single obligation that each player has, but there's also a pool of obligation that the group has. So again, we'll just go over how it works very generally, but you can look into the book for more information. Um, basically, when you create your character, you have some options for obligation that you can choose. And there's a bunch here, and we're actually going to go into them individually in a little while. Um, but you can choose one of these. You can also make up your own if you can think of something uh, that's different. But you choose one of these, whatever you feel fits your character, and then um, it might be used at some point down the line, but it, it also just adds kind of flavor to your character, helps you add some backstory. Um, you know, maybe you can create certain characters that you are dealing with that you have obligation to. Um, so it's a really good tool, especially for Edge of the Empire. I think it works very well. Um, but when you create your character and you choose an obligation, what you can do is you can take some extra obligation. And this, uh, this can do a couple things. So you can take five extra obligation, um, which can give you 500 extra credits, or you can use five uh, obligation in order to get um, plus five experience. And then you can also, you also have the option of taking plus 10 obligation when you create your character. And this will give you either 1000 credits or plus 10 experience. So you can choose either five or 10 and you can either choose credits or experience. And if you're thinking, you know, I don't really understand what this means, why would I take obligation and why do I get so much from it? Um, the reason is because having obligation is bad. It generally is a negative thing. It's something that you don't want to deal with as, as a player. And the more obligation you have, the harder it is for you to avoid your obligation in the game. So again, I mentioned there is a single obligation that players have. So if you, let's say you add the plus 10 obligation when you create your character, that will be plus 10 to your individual amount, but it will also be added to the total pool um, for all the players. And I do have to apologize if you hear sounds in the background. For some reason, I'm always recording videos on Mondays and that is our trash day. So hopefully it's not too loud for everyone, but um, but what? It, uh, but it, so it adds to the the uh, full team's obligation. So to give you um, an idea of how this might work, I will show you in roll twenty. I'm just making sure that we went. So that's pretty much everything that I want to go over for this um, page. I guess the the good thing to point out is when you do start a session, and you can as a GM, you can kind of use discretion. You can leave out obligation if you want to. Maybe you just don't want to deal with it, or there's a session where you want to focus specifically on the task at hand. You don't want to add obligation because it will it's kind of like a side plot that gets added so um so you can choose to avoid it however if you do want to use obligation i think it's pretty fun especially in the edge of the empire setting um the way it will work is you start off with a certain amount per player and this is just a base amount so this does not include the plus five or the plus ten that are added individually from from players um so if you were playing with two players each player will have 20 obligation that they start off. No matter what, this is every session, this is what they start out with. You can't reduce this. It's based on the number of players there are. If there's three players, you have 15 each, um, four players, 10 each, five players, 10 each, and then six plus is five each. So basically, when you um, kind of finish 
the the base amount of obligation per session, it's going to be between 50, um, 40 to 60 around there. So 40, 50, 60, those are pretty common numbers for um, obligation. I would say 40 to 50 is, is a good amount. Um, and we'll go into kind of what that means. So obviously more obligation is bad. Um, so we'll go into kind of how that works, but usually 40 to 50 is gonna be a base obligation for, for every game. So let's now go into um, the starting obligation rules and how you set up obligation before a session starts. So when you start, you have to create the base pool depending on the number of players. And that is what we just spoke uh, spoke about. So it's either, you know, if it's two players, it's 20 each. So you do that. And so you add all of those together to have a pool. So again, you'll have around 40 or 50. Um, and then after that, if there's any additional obligation that players took during their character creation, you will also add that to the pool. So it's either the five or the 10 per player. Um, and let's say if every player in your group, and let's say you have four or five players, they all add 10 obligation, you're going to be up to about 70 or 80 obligation when you start out, which is a very, very high number. Um, so you add that to the pool. And then from there, um, it gets a little bit more complicated, but the GM has to assign number ranges. Um, so generally what you want to do is you want to get, you know, tell all your players to tell you how much obligation they took in character creation, then figure out what the base pool is going to be, and then figure out each individual person's total obligation. So it'll be the base pool plus the extra they took. So if you're playing with two players, then each player will have 20. And if it's plus 10, that means each player, then whoever added 10 has 30 obligations. So again, it's a little complicated, but hopefully you're able to follow along with what this means. Um, so let's say you have two players, just to make it a little bit easier. Player A took 10 obligation. So that player has um, 20 base and then 10 from character creation. They have a total of 30. So that player, when you put them on the, the list of um, the number ranges, they will have numbers one through 30. And then the second player, let's say they also took 10 in character creation. That means they also have 30. So they'll have 31 to 60. That's the number ranges. And so that covers the entire pool. So that's how it's going to work. Now, after you've uh, you know created the pool, added the extra obligation from players, then assigned the number ranges as the GM, the GM then rolls a D100. And um, basically what you want as a team is for the number to be higher than your total pool. If it's higher than your total pool, you're safe. It's basically, you know, you don't have to deal with obligation. You don't have to worry about it. Um, if the role is below the total pool, then that means a certain player must deal with their obligation during the session. And that uh, number that you roll is going to be assigned to a number range. So going back to the example, if player A has one to 30, player B has 31 to 60, um, and you roll a 52, that means player B now has to deal with their obligation. And we're gonna go into kind of how that will work in the next section. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's a little complicated, but um, maybe if, if you're able to, to listen to what I said again, hopefully it'll be a, you know not too complicated. But generally, the thing about obligation is it's notoriety, it's negative things that you would have to deal with uh, as a player. It adds flavor to a session. It also adds flavor to a, a character's background. Um, and you want to have a total pool of obligation that isn't too high. Um, and then I'll also go into interesting things you can do with, let's say a, a group that has a lot of notoriety. Um, and I'm actually dealing that with a current campaign that I'm doing with some friends. And I'm gonna go into kind of my plan. We're only on the second session coming up, but um, we'll just go into that. That's a little extra. It's not really part of the rules, but I think it'll be interesting. So. Let's move on to over here. I want to make sure you all can see this since I have cropped my screen here. So we're going to go into each type of obligation that is in that chart. And these are going to be options as a GM you can use in order to deal with these. So again, we'll go back to the example. Let's say player B, we hit their obligation there. It's in their number range. They have to deal with it. And now we're going to look at if let's say player b had some of these options how could we deal with it and we also have to work with the players on this because they need to give you some information if they don't really if, let's say they chose addiction but with without any real background in mind you have to try to get that out of them um, might be something to do earlier before the the campaign even starts 
just figure out what the background is, if there are people involved, if, you know, if they have names, if there's certain, you know, certain things that are assigned to their obligation, you can then bring that up in the session. So, um, again, you roll the one, the D100, the obligation comes up, player B is up, they have to deal with their obligations at some point in the session. So the GM has to incorporate this. So if let's say the player chose addiction, and this is a really fun one. I've had I think I had one player do addiction in the past. It was really fun. Um, so you can do a couple things. Let's say, uh, you know, you wanted to affect the willpower roles. So this could be discipline, resilience, things like that. Um, you know, things that have to do with, uh, you know, if, if they are drinking or doing drugs, it will affect their willpower. You can upgrade dice whenever they roll a check like that, or you could add setback dice to it to make it harder. Um, what the player did when we use addiction before is they made their own rule and it was if i don't drink every 10 minutes i'm going to take strain you know consistently which i thought was really cool really good idea so that's another thing you could do and you know if, and uh, i remember we played and he actually had a flask while we played and he took a sip every 10 uh every 10 minutes so it was just it was a really good um fun way to kind of incorporate that um so you can always say, you know, player must drink and take every 10 minutes. Um, and then let's say they either they take strain or they make a hard resilience check um, every time they take a drink, um, something like that. So that's a, a fun way to use addiction. So let's say, again, you roll player B. You can just come up with one of these on the fly, let them know, see how they feel about it. If the player maybe wants to change it up, you know, do something that works. But you want it to be something that will actually affect the game. You don't want it to be like you know, one tiny little thing, you know, you want it to be, have some weight to it. So, um, so that's addiction. There's also betrayal is an option. So this could be, um, the player. And a lot of these are going to be players being preoccupied or their tension is kind of elsewhere. So again, it's like a subplot that one player really has to think about. So this one is a player is preoccupied with, um, either the person that they betrayed or betrayed them. So this could be something maybe they're looking for other people to find information about this person, or maybe they are paranoid because they're afraid that the person they betrayed is, you know, maybe he's out, out to get them, something like that. Um, so maybe this person, because they're so preoccupied, they might take a penalty their, to their perception or their social checks, something like that. Um, or maybe, and I think another good tool to use in a lot of these is morality. So you can, let's say because this person betrayed, you know, maybe a friend or a family member that they will now have to, um, their morality is swinging very negatively. And so now they need to kind of add that into their character. They maybe they need to be a little bit more negative, a little bit more like chaotic, you know, chaotic evil, something like that, whatever it might be. So I think morality is, is a good one to kind of throw in there. Um, and so, and this can change for each one. It could it could be a mechanics thing. Maybe you change certain skill checks. Maybe you add a certain amount of dice, or it could just be narrative based. You know, just be like this person has to be focused on the betrayal. You know, and and use the characters accordingly, whatever they might give you. Um, the next one is blackmail. So the player. Uh, must be controlled by another npc to do something so maybe they they are you know they have been bribed by blackmail to kill someone or maybe they need to get a certain amount of money or they need to steal an item um you know something like that or maybe the blackmail is connected to some type of betrayal they, they need to betray someone they know um, in order for this other person's gain so um so that one can be pretty self-explanatory it is that one's mainly based on what the character has has chosen the player um so that could be a fun one bounty is probably the most common and the probably the easiest one to do i think criminal is also very easy so this is simple so you have um a bounty on you for something that you've done um there's going to be you know some bounty hunters chasing you um and that's as a you know npc it's also easy to throw in because you can say all right you know this bounty hunter is now on your tail or like you maybe you try to keep it a little bit more sneaky and you don't tell them they're on their tail but things are happening that is kind of um implying that this this character needs to be careful because you know they're being looked after and you can you know just see how that one goes so i think bounty is very common and also very fun to do um criminals similar similar let's say you are an escape criminal um so the local police or other authorities are chasing you so this could be just like a bounty hunter just almost a different type um of of chase that's you know being uh that's going on for you it could also be that you are being um 
maybe stereotyped or discriminated against because you're a criminal. Um, you know, maybe there's certain things that you can't get away with or can't do because you're a criminal. Or you could, as the GM, tell the player that if they do anything fishy or anything that's criminal, that they need to be really careful because their notoriety is super high. And uh, if they get in trouble, they're going to be, you know, basically screwed. So um, that's criminal. Debt is another very common one that a lot of people do. So this is simply, you just need to gather a certain amount of money in order to pay off your debt. And I think if you are the GM and you're trying to figure out how to put this in the session, just say, you need to make $500 in this session, or you're going to, or, you know, something else is going to happen, some type of consequence. Um, or it could be similar to like maybe a, a bounty or, or, you know, being a criminal. Maybe there is a debtor um, that is after you that you have to take care of. Maybe you have to kill them, or you might have to use, you know, some skill checks to bribe them to wait a little bit longer, kind of pull like a Han Solo type of thing. Or maybe you're bribing their henchmen um, in order to give you more time. So that's uh, it's a common one, very good for if you are playing a, uh, a, a smuggler or a scoundrel, you know, something like that. Um, the next one is duty bound. So this is, um, you are devoted to a certain cause and therefore you must do X, whatever that might be. Or maybe you are pro prohibited from doing X. So this could be, maybe, you know, you are devoted to being lawful. Um, you're, maybe you are devoted to the law, maybe you are military. Um, so you are devoted to the empire. So you, you know, that's something that you have to, to throw in. So maybe if the gm could tell you like if if there's any trouble that comes up with the empire you have to be cooperative with them you have to be respectful of them because you are duty bound to them um which could have some serious side effects for your party so um yeah so you can kind of do it that way like your duty for a certain thing might get in the way of what your party is trying to do especially in into the empire when there's lots of like criminal stuff going on um you know could throw a big wrench into a a session so um, other options, you know, maybe, you know, you are a pacifist, so you can't kill people, you know, you, you're unable to gamble, um, you know, you have to always do the right thing, or maybe you always lie because you are bound to a criminal syndicate or like a spy, um, agency, something like that, or you're spying for the, the, uh, the rebels, something like that. Um, next is family. So this is, um, you know, you have to, you're focused on family for something. So you must provide something for your family. Maybe you need to get them money or food, um, or maybe you're trying to find a, you know, a house for them or something on a planet. Um, you could also be looking for maybe a long lost family member, which might be one of the more common ways to do this. So, um, something you're occupied for, um, Another one, favor. So this is very similar to having a debt, except this is some in an action that you have to perform for someone else, uh, something that a character needs you to complete. So um, actually, I've just realized that this is probably cut off for a lot of you. So let's move this over. Um, probably still can't see some of it. Let me uh, get out here. Okay. Hopefully that's a little bit better. I'll actually move up. Um, so if you guys did miss anything in the other ones that I was talking about, you can see it. Um, so, yeah, so this could be something that a, a character wants you to complete, something that you, you know, they helped you in the past, so you need to now repay the favor. Maybe this is a character you haven't seen in a while, and you run into them, and they're like, oh, remember that thing I did? And then you have to deal with it. So that's something you could do as a GM. Um, so let's say you must break out a friend of yours from a local prison, or you maybe you need to get a certain item for someone. Um, and I think a really fun way to throw this in as the GM is at the beginning of the session to say, hey, this, you're, there's going to be an opportunity that I'm going to give you during the game. And if you miss it, something seriously, so, something bad is going to happen to you. Like there's going to be a consequence for it. So let's say you, the favor for the person is you need to find a certain item. And there's going to be a certain part of the session where the GM has the opportunity for them to find the item. And let's say they don't do it. Then, you know, you, you do, you deal with the consequence of that. So that is uh, a favor. And then let's move over just a little bit. Okay. Next is oath. So it's very similar to being duty bound, except this is a specific moral code. So it's not like you're maybe devoted to a you know, certain organization or a certain institution um, or, you know, whatever. So you're devoted to something. This is a moral code that you have made for yourself. It could be related to an organization or institution, whatever. Um, but it's something that you've kind of, you know, promised that you would want to do. So 
a good way to do this is if let's say the the player goes against their oath at some point during the session the gm can call them out and say hey you are now going against your oath let's say um you know your oath was to be righteous you know if the player now does something fishy you know there could be a consequence for it and i think a good thing for this one um since it is about morality is to have you know um, significant morality effects so let's say if they break their oath it's going to make their morality very very negative um so that's how you can do that um obsession is another one that is uh uh can be used so this is obviously something that you are obsessed with so it's garnering all of your attention something that you are very focused on i think um, you could have as a gm this could affect their perception checks or other skill checks may be harder for them to do the person may also add black dice to all of their checks until whatever their obsession or compulsion is until it's dealt with um maybe if they are obsessed with money you know they they need to get money during this um session or their morality will swing very negatively um or let's say their obsession is of a person it could have a very negative effect on whoever they're obsessed with you know something like that so um yeah i think that's an you know it could be very interesting i've never dealt with i've never dealt with a lot of these most players do either bounty or debt i will say which makes sense it's easy and it's it's a kind of a fun one you know they're they're fun to do and they're easy so um yeah, and then the last one is responsibility. This one, I, di I didn't think it was too different from, like, duty-bound or even oath. You know, I was trying to think of, like, what makes this different. I think a lot of it is, uh, it's probably something they didn't choose, or maybe it's something that they feel is a burden rather than something. So, like, if you have an oath, maybe that's something that you're doing because you think it's the right thing to do. Or let's say you are duty-bound because you you know you want to be part of a certain organization whatever this could be your responsibility that you know maybe it's to like a family member you know maybe you have a son or a child um that you need to take care of so that's a responsibility of yours something that is a burden to you that you have to deal with um but again the the way you would deal with this as a gm is very similar to the other ones to duty bound in oath so so that's an overview of the options in the the table um and that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over with obligation. Um, once again, just, you know, it's notoriety. It's something that you, as a player, will have to deal with during a session. And I think it does add a lot of flavor. Um, however, there have been times when I've GM'd and we do obligation. And, you know, some, we, someone has maybe a bounty they have to deal with. But let's say there's a serious battle going on. And th there's not really room to throw in that side mission. I think in those sessions it might be good to just kind of dispense with it and say like all right obligation is not the focus we'll do something else um and then the, the last little thing i wanted to put in as a bonus and i mentioned this earlier was let's say a, a group does something really really terrible where they cause a lot of chaos and havoc they wreak a lot of havoc maybe they kill a bunch of people they massacre people how would you deal with that as a gm now what i'm doing is i just started a campaign with some friends and the ending did not go very well they killed a lot of people um and a lot of them were not guilty they were innocent people so the group is um has a lot of notoriety right now so much so after that that i have decided to make my next session basically focused on their notoriety and um it's something that they're they have to be very alert about it's going to be a constant type of um issue or, or thing that they have to deal with and you can also as a gm maybe decide that if you have an obligation rule maybe you just decide that their obligation pool is super high because of that so you know throw away the the base level for the session throw away the extra obligation you can if you want to and this is again kind of off the book a little bit just say listen your notoriety is now at a 90. so if we do roll for it you're gonna have to really you know get that high roll in order to avoid it but the the main way i'm doing is the players are now because they just you know again it was like a massacre that they were a part of they are on the run um that's what the next session is going to start those are on the run they you know they're probably lots of people chasing after them you know the criminal syndicates are involved um so they've caused a lot of people to notice them um and they're trying to lay low so this session is going to be a lot of them just kind of like avoiding avoiding people um dealing with danger maybe there's going to be money involved so that's really 
I think important is, you know, and it's something that if a group is going a little crazy with what they're doing, like, let's say you set up this whole situation, they just go in and decide to kill everyone, which can happen. And it's honestly not, <laughs> not, it, it can be fun sometimes, but if you have a group that's doing that every session, they're just like destroying whatever situation you have set up, then you know just make something make a consequence for it you know they they make the game as realistic as possible don't let you know something super serious go away unnoticed so um i think that's something that can be you know fun and it also it provides a new challenge for the players if they do something serious now they have to kind of dig themselves out of it and it creates more opportunities for you know um battle and combat opportunities um they might have to now use deception a lot to kind of you know talk their way out of, of situations so keep an eye on the notoriety level as gm um and then also trying to have players role play their obligation in a way that's fun i think um is a good way to to do this so that is obligation um hopefully you all enjoyed again there is more information in the book but that's pretty much everything that you need to know um i would say at a base level so um if you do have any questions feel free to put them in the comments but i want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you soon